No, nope, that's right. Never be afraid to let the Holy Spirit have his way. That's what it's all about. The Holy Spirit don't have his way. What's the point in uh, coming to God's house? I'm going to try to record a message uh, because Joyce asked me to. <laughs> I can't be there, so I was like, all right. But uh, <clears throat> I uh, said something about Jeremiah uh, a few moments ago. It's actually Joshua that said that. And I know uh, Sister Wanda Grace knew that, but she wasn't going to call me out. But call me out. I have no problem with that. Call me out. But uh, God called me out. So, I mean, I know it's Joshua, but I say Jeremiah. But I do the same thing with uh, uh, Ezekiel and Elisha. I do the same thing with a whole bunch of them. I know uh, who I'm talking about, So, but sometimes uh, everybody's going to make mistakes and say things wrong. They will be have somebody else on their heart and they'll say it wrong, but if you, and if you don't read the Bible, I can mislead you with that. But if you do read the Bible, you'll know what I'm talking about. I was, I had it on my mind to be in Timothy and maybe Philippians, but uh, the Lord said not so. So therefore I am in Joshua 24. Not Jeremiah now, uh, guy, Joshua, buddy. All righty. I was like, well, I know it's J. Jeremiah don't sound exactly right, but, uh, and behold, <laughs> right as she was, uh, right as we were singing these songs, this, this came to my mind. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people will not, uh, will absolutely uh, not listen to the Holy Spirit. When uh, the Holy Spirit changes something, they will fight against it and go against it. Uh, uh, I'm talking about preachers and pastors and whatnot. And uh, they will hinder everything, and God's will will not be done. And they will uh, uh, hinder the Holy Spirit of God from having its way. And man gets the pat on the back. God's not in it nowhere. And they know this, and they continue to do it. Yet, at the same time, they continue to do it. Uh, and then wonder why they don't get blessings the way they used to or need to. But I'll tell you something, church. <clears throat> Uh, I've been preaching for a little while now, and, you know, not only does the Word of God step on sometimes the congregation's toes, it steps on the preacher's toes. And, uh, but that is always a good thing. If God deals, God's Holy Word is designed for that purpose. It goes out and it accomplishes exactly the thing that God sent it forth to accomplish. Now, if I'm outside of God's will, it's going to be sent forth to accomplish, uh, to prick my heart, to uh, uh, present to me the bitter truth, and what I do with it is going to be upon me. And uh, Joshua did just that. He reminded these people in the chapter of 24. <clears throat> uh <clears throat> I'll read, I guess, maybe, uh, I'll begin with verse 1, because uh, it's been a while since I've been in Joshua, so it'll be a good refreshing uh, uh, for me, as well as somebody else, <clears throat> uh, everybody else, hopefully. Joshua 24, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Now, this took place because God is in charge, and God's the one that's doing it. And Joshua said unto the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in, the, uh, in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nacor, or Nachor, whichever way, uh, and they served other gods. And I, now this is, and I, that is God, and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, or it's just saying before the day of the flood, uh, and, and uh, let's see, and I took your, uh, your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir, and uh, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out. 
And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after you, uh, your father, after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, over, uh, over them, and over, and covered them rather. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt, and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I bought, brought you into the land of the Amorites, which uh, dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that ye might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. And if you're not aware right now what, what I'm reading... This is the Almighty God making sure that these children and grandchildren that have grown up and was not literally in that uh, whole whole thing, they are being taught it right now. If uh, just in case their children, uh, their fathers did not teach them, God's making sure everybody going to know the truth right here, right now. But there's a reason behind all of this. Let's continue. Uh <clears throat> Then, uh, verse 9, Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken or hearken uh, unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still. I, uh, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. Uh, and the men of Jericho uh, fought against you, the Amorites and the Persians and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do you eat. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Well, now we are finding out what, what these people are still doing after everything that God has done. They are still serving the gods of their forefathers and their fathers that God brought them away from. And now God, through the mouth of Joshua, is reminding them, everything that I have done, it's time for you to put away every other thing, and that includes ourselves, church, and serve God in sincerity of our heart. Now... <clears throat> And 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me... Uh, Josh, uh, uh, Joshua is saying, and Joshua is being bold now because he knows he's standing for the Lord, and he knows the most of the majority of the people are not. And yet, this one man of God, he finds boldness because of the uh, strength of God, the grace of God, the might of God, and the power of God. Just as Paul said, "Pray for me that I would speak boldly as I ought to speak." And church, sometimes. Sometimes that's hard to do. But when God is on the scene, it's as easy as pie. And that's what Joshua's doing here. He's reminding these people everything that God did. Or rather, God is reminding him of them everything that he's done. Now Joshua's saying, The gods of your fathers serve uh, whether uh, uh, on the other side of the flood of the gods of Abraham in whose land you dwell at uh, 
uh, or Amorites, not Abraham. Uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's notice what the people said. The people said, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Now let's continue to li let's let's listen to what is being said right here, church. And uh, for uh, seventeen, for the Lord our God, the people are saying, He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And uh, notice what the Lord has given them now. The Lord has given them the truth to speak. Listen to what is being said. Take heed to this. Verse 18. They go on to say, And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for He is our God. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like it should be finished right there. Okay, fellas. Okay, brothers, sisters. Good deal. Good deal. Joshua may have said that, but that's not what Joshua said. Joshua said, and Joshua said in verse 19 unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive you uh, your, your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then He will turn and do you hurt, allow evil to come upon you. It's not going to be God Himself that's doing it, but if He takes away His mighty hand, there's all kinds of garbage that can take place then. How many people are not coming into God's house and expect everything to be just fine. It won't happen, church. How many people are going against the very Word of God in their own lifestyle and think God's going to have their back? It ain't going to happen, church. Let me tell you something, uh, brother. That's why Joshua told these people, you cannot serve of the Lord your God. Why would he say that? Because these people, they were were using God at their own disposal. They were using God uh, going back and forth but at the same time they would come and inquire of God they would come and ask of God they would come and pray unto God but at the same time they go right back and do the same exact thing uh, that goes against the very word of God and in their heart they could never see they would always have the understanding that I mean they would always uh, continue to have knowledge, but they would never for their own life uh, come to the knowledge of the, uh, the understanding of that knowledge. What did you say, preacher? These people were doing exactly what people are doing today. Uh, they're using God. Uh, they're uh, living the lifestyle that they want to live. That goes against the Holy Bible. And yet they expect a uh, God to bless. I got news for you and me. God will will not uh, bless anybody uh, that's going against his word and living in sin. And that's why uh, Joshua told them, you can't serve uh, the Lord your God. Uh, he's a holy God. He's a, a just God. He's, but he will not forgive you. Why would he say he will not forgive you? Because they return unto their own thing. They return unto their own way. They re and thinking God's going to look down and have their back. It ain't so, church. The devil is full of evil. He's full of snares. And I'll tell you something right now. Of being a pastor, no matter where it might be, I will, by God's grace, I stand upon His word and, brother, go against each and every one of that I have to. If that's what it takes, I go. I have went again. A people in my own family uh, to stand upon the word of God and brother by the grace of God uh, with the mighty arm of God and through his power and his might I will stand and proclaim uh, thus saith the Lord thy God uh, look around 
around today, church. Uh, there's people that go to church, and then there's the church. And I'll tell you something right now, church. Uh, there's more people that go to church uh, than there are the church itself. But I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, God's coming back not for the church goer. He's coming back for the church. And brother, we better be prepared. That lifeboat is coming, and it's coming in a hurry. Each and every second that gets away from you and I, it can never be relived. It can never be redone. Oh, but notice the people, how God laid upon their heart and caused them to say their own truth, uh, caused them to speak of the very thing that was going to go against them. And Joshua being the man of God, hold on there, people. You can't serve God in the manner that you're trying to serve Him. It just won't work. Uh, begin, I thank God that it won't turn. Uh, because can you imagine if, if Joshua would have never said anything, if God would have never told uh, Joshua to stand and proclaim a uh, brother just like he did every other prophet of uh, uh, each and every man of God. He knows already, church, uh, that people for the most part, uh, they will not hear. They will not see. Having ears to hear, they will not hear. A uh, brother here for the most part. And but God's people know this, but they go and preach anyway, even though his word uh, for the most part falls on dead ears. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been here nine years in a couple of months, and it's high time uh, that God have his perfect way within these walls. If you're living against the word of God, put it away from you or find some place else to go. Uh, so the Lord God uh, will not be hindered. I'm tired of people coming in uh, playing this and playing that. Brother, you can try to do me any way you want, uh, but thus saith the Lord thy God. I know those who are mine, and I know those who are the synagogue of Satan and do lie. God knows it all. You preaching to me this morning. I'm not here to preach to you this individual, that individual, what we're doing. God laid something upon my heart. Glory be to God. His will be done. The place will never grow if a man of God is afraid to speak the truth. The place will never grow. I would rather have 15 people in here each and every time. Make it five. Just like, Lord, if you see five people in Sodom and Gomorrah that are righteous, will you still destroy, destroy it for their sake? Be it far from you. The Lord said, if Abraham, if I find five righteous souls, I will spare the whole city. I'd rather have five righteous souls, brother, and everything be spared. I'm not into turmoil. I'm not into uh, things turning upside down. I'm into standing and proclaiming the word of God. We're either for God or we're against God. We're either on God's side and we're going to straighten up and we're going to proclaim the word of God and we're going to come in and we're going to listen to it and when we leave these walls, we're going to go outside with our life and we're going to continue in what saith the word of God or we're going to uh, fall by or we're going to fall by by the word of God itself. We will stand there by God's word or we will fall by God's word. But I'll tell you one thing. God's word is not a word that can be bent and twisted and tied up uh, to please you and I. It didn't work for these uh, the whole Israel back then. It's not going to work for you and I today. But everywhere you go, God's holy sanctuary, which Jesus said, this it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Who am I, church, to just live my life any old way I choose, do whatever I want, and then thank God's going to have my back. Oh, I'm believing a lie. I'm going against everything God stands for when I do that. And so are each and every one of us who may do it. I hope and I pray everything is well between us all with God. God knows. But I'll tell you something. Never think you're going to make children of God believe that you're in God's will if you're outside of what His Word says. If He says, Thou shalt not, don't do it. If you're doing it, you're on your own. I'm backing away. 
If I'm, I'll try my best to help you in love, direct you, guide you. That's what reproving is. I'm going to reprove uh, with love and kindness. But if that don't take place, it's going to turn into a reproach. I'm going to sharply uh, uh, be against you because I'm going to hold on to the Word of God. I'm not going to stand uh, and give an account to you, and you won't give an account to me. I'll tell you something, church, but we're all going to give an account to God. I don't care who we are. And I'll tell you something else. We cannot serve God. We always ask for prayer. Nothing wrong with that. I encourage prayer. But how many, I just want to lay it out. How many of us are coming into God's house when we feel like it, when the mood strikes, when the urge comes to us, and then we don't do anything but the same thing over and over. God said, put it all away from you. It's not sacrifice I'm interested in. It's mercy. How they're on their phone. I got to get him of this. Nobody cares. Does God care about that? Is any of that going to be at the coming of the day of God? Absolutely not. Everything that we're allowed to have down here, and then we go out, and then we just continue right back in our own life and think, uh, wonder why everything's shot to, uh, uh, everything's in a mess. Everything's turned upside down. I'll tell you exactly why everything gets turned upside down. 99 times out of 100, because we turn away from God. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. If you don't like this preaching church, which is the Word of God, I'll know, I guess, by next Sunday, because most of you don't come out Sunday evening. But I'll tell you something else. If there's one or two people that come out next Sunday, I'll preach the same way and the same thing. It'll be the Word of God. That's just the way, that's right. The Word of God never changes. My God does not change. He has never given in to anyone, even a whole nation. He never gave in. Everybody that stood against God, they perished. Each and every single time after the long suffering of God, and uh, they still refused to see. They refused, they still refused to change. They perished. The righteous perished. Or so it seems, I, I always got to say that, because a righteous person, they will never perish. But the righteous perish, and no man, none lays it to heart. None considers that the righteous are taken away, removed right up out of the way from all of this evil to come. And when God comes back, the righteous people that are found here, guess what? Same thing is going to happen. They, will, they too will be taken away, caught up into the air, and so shall we agree with the Lord, taken away from the evil to come. Let loose the wrath of the Almighty God. But Lord, didn't I do all of these works? Works will get you nowhere. Amen. Works will get you nowhere unless they are the work of God. If you love me, there's something we got to do. Keep my commandments. Don't keep my commandments and try to say you love me. The Lord said you're hot, neither hot nor cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. If I'm going to live according to the word of God, I'm going to have to do it exactly like Joshua said. I would love nothing more than the Holy Spirit to have its 100% free will, free course, absolute uh, free of way inside of these walls when God's people come in. But if we're going to fight against the pastor, it ain't going to happen. We're just going to end up driving the man of God out and brother, everything will be demolished. Parents, you think if things can run without the the Holy Spirit of God, you need to think again. I know this ain't a popular message, church, but if God lays it upon my heart, I want you and I to take heed. We are entire need today of the Holy Spirit of God, because for the most part, not here alone, but everywhere we go, people are coming and going, and it's nothing but a routine in their life of using God at their own disposal, or so they think. Oh, but I'll 
tell you one thing. Uh, the Bible tells me to be reminded of this. God is not mocked. Uh, brother, I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, God will not be mocked under any circumstances. He has the last say. And if God's word and God's will is not within our heart, who are we to pretend that we are his people? If God's will is not being allowed to be done in our life, who do we think we are? Who do we think we're hiding something from? I may or may not see some of what's going on from time to time. Don't really care because I'm not following you to find out. But I'll tell you one thing. God Almighty knows. And in the book, and in the uh, heaven, there's one a book that's being written down. A book of remembrance church. Of people come and they use God and they continue to come in. It's everywhere today. A God's holy place. Holy temple. Holy sanctuary. As far as when his people are inside. His place shall be called. His house I mean shall be called the house of prayer. But the people all over the universe have are turning it into one big social gathering. Uh, do away with the church. If you want your life to be uh, the turmoil to stop. Uh, seek God your, uh, seek the Lord your God. If we want our prayers to be heard, let's seek the Lord our God. If my people who are called by my name uh, would humble themselves. How many times uh, do we fail from that? Uh, brother, too many people are just so easily to see to be upset and get all bent out of shape when you present the truth to them. But I'll tell you something, church. You may do me that way. I may do you that way. But we'll not do that way to God. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from our wicked ways and begin to seek his faith and pray, then he shall hear from heaven. Until if that don't happen, expect nothing in this world to change. Nothing. We are going to serve God according to his word, in spirit and in truth. Or no matter who likes it, we're not serving God at all. Simple as that. God is the spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I don't know about the rest of you. I don't know what these churches around us teach. Don't have a clue. Never been to either one of them. My time is not free. I can't just come and go. Like to from time to time. I love to get fed. But you know how go. I, I, and, 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 but you know what? It's like when I'm feeding you or God's feeding you, I'm getting fed too. So it's a win-win for me. Win-win for me. But the house of God that shall be called a house of prayer. It's written. Even we, without knowing it, and some do know it, we still continue to do our own devices. Continue to, we make, well, I'm not out here serving another God. Another God can be serving yourself. That's where we're going with that. That's why the Lord tells us to look in the mirror. Some people look in the mirror, they behold themselves, and they walk away from it, and they forgot, I forgot what I looked like. Let me go check it again. We go to church. We get fed. We enjoy it. Some of us do. Some of us don't. We're just there because that's what we're supposed to do. What did the preacher preach? I said, you know, I can't remember. What good is that? Do you, I, I want you to answer this question within yourself. I've been here nine years. Do I preach the word of God? Do I teach the word of God? Or do I try to persuade you to believe something else? Now, you answer that within yourselves. You consider what kind of... Uh, uh, preaching I do, you consider what kind of man I am out of all these years. And I want you to ask yourself something else. Have you seen any spiritual growth within yourself? Or is everything the same? Well, if everything's the same, it must be the pastor's fault. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, it must be God's. I don't think so. Those who ask it shall be given. Those who seek it, they shall find. Those who knock, it shall be opened unto them. I seek, I knock, I ask. I don't know about the rest of you. But I'll tell you something, church. I know I'm not interested in a big crowd and a big number. I mean, always, the more that uh, come into the Lord's house, the merrier. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But I'm more concerned about growing in the Lord spiritually than I am any, anything else. 
We Amen. need to grow up unto the Lord as the, uh, the person that he wants you and I. When I was a child, the Apostle Paul said, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, uh, I act as a child, but when I became a man in the Lord, it's time to put this uh, uh, milk away and take some meat. The meat, it, uh, which is the uh, uh, word of God, uh, more the harder things to understand but uh, when we begin to take that and chew it up, don't spit it out, swallow it. it. In my mouth, it was bitter, bitter. But when I swallowed it, it was sweet as a honeycomb. That truth, it, it is bitter, ain't it? I know when the Lord dealt with me, I was gnawing on it, chewing on it, uh, frustrating myself with it, fighting all against it. No, I don't want to hear that. Tell that preacher to shut up. All bitter, all bitter. But once I swallowed it and accepted the truth that came from God, boy, it was sweet as a honeycomb. Sweet as a honeycomb. Like Cleo always said, have I made a mistake? You better believe it. Have I fallen from time to time? You better believe it. Has God forsaken me? Not once. Not once. But what do I do? I get up and continue to, uh, after asking, for, forgive me, Lord, and then I run right back and do the same thing, wallowing the ways of the world instead of being not of the world, the whole church is mingling with the world. The whole church is just grabbing on to the world and the filth of the world. Handle not, taste not, have no part of. Touch not, handle not, and be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord your God. Where would we be if, uh, where would any church house be? And I'm getting ready to wrap this up. I'm going to leave you with uh, these uh, few thoughts. Where would any church uh, be if everybody was allowed to just do what we wanted to do and nobody have a problem with it. Yeah, it'd be a mess. Be turned upside down. Uh, uh, big, huge splits all over the place. No unity whatsoever. No love whatsoever. It's all about Jesus, folks. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And if the, the name of Jesus Christ is not lifted up, honored, praised, glorified, uh, beautified, edified, count me out, I'll see you later, bye. That's exactly where I stand, so there's no if, and, or buts, or no confusion about where this boy stands. Ain't no, ain't no but, what, oh, ain't no, yeah, but, ain't none of that. If the, somebody asked me just the other day, I want your opinion. Uh, on some spiritual stuff. And I said, I won't give it to you. Why not? I said, I'll give you the word of God. The word of God is my opinion. My opinion don't, won't help you none. It may get you and me in trouble. But if you want spiritual help, I'll tell you by the grace of God, if I'm able, what saith the word of God? That'll be my opinion. Because it won't waver. It won't flex. It won't change. Where would we be, church? If the Lord simply allowed you and I to do anything and everything we wanted, and then everything still be all right. How many of us are lying to ourselves? How many people out there in the world that go to church every Sunday? Uh, I, I'm talking about the people that are not supposed to be in the world. How many of us are just doing the same thing again and again, refuse to change, and, and still uh, are lying to ourselves? We are allowed to believe that lie because God said, hey, after so long, I will turn you right over to your own way because I'm not going to deal with you all of your life like you think. Yo, you have set your mind to go against me. You have set your heart to go against me. It has become as feared as a hot iron. 